you go ahead i want to ask you do you have questions do you have answers because it might be question and answers already but how was sunday for us it was good bar. yes sir and you not, don't feel like i said anything on that sunday <laughs> i was still asking admin that what was it that i don't remember what i even said i need to watch the video because eh, ah, eh. okay so tell me one thing that stood out for you before i get into the teaching today what's what yes shady one thing that stood out for me that that you married is not a proof of love hmm. that you are married you be like you invoke book you didn't book <laughs> all right so that you and it's true you are married does not mean you are in india you are you can marry you can marry and you're not happy and your own is even worse safe because it's probably yes ma'am tell us thank you sir yes yeah, something that stood out for me that was at the later um, one of the parts things. yes yeah was like you said you uh, should lose your own anger lose the right to be angry so That's true. Longer. yes lose your forfeit the right to be angry she did it, she did it, she did it. You are still at a level of maturity. That's why you're angry. When you grow older than that behavior, you will forgive easily. Okay? Three, um, Banquet told us, three things to prove genuine love is in place. Number one is what? Giving, forgiving, and sacrifice. I was reading the Google profile tracking today. And I noticed that people tracked Virtuous Christian Center a lot last month. This is it. Mm. Look at that. It was still less than 35 the previous month. So it's just to let you know that the word is going out. Mm? Don't be afraid. The Bible says so mightily grew the word. And don't, don't feel we are not after fancy stuff here. We're after substance. You, you can hold the fancy. I can hold the substance. Soon enough, you will know that he who holds the substance controls the mm. fancy. Mm. One more. You go see what they talk. All right, let's take one or two more. You're welcome, madam. How are you? It's your first time here? You're welcome. Please be comfortable. Be very comfortable. It's, it's a family meeting, okay? You're welcome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. All right, so from the next time here, you say love is in me that God is ready to yes i did not i don't overview that point too. yes i can't oh, actually which i intentionally have so i can <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are with ourselves together don't shake him yes god bless you and that's in fact you are very right because i got home and i realized i didn't go i didn't finish that tangent of thoughts yes i just quickly because there's too much to say i just was Thank you. Thank note, you. note. Let me note it down. Mm. Yes, oh, very good one. Very good one. Thank you for that. Because true, true, I remember at home. Yeah. Yes, ma. You are saying the one that because I said I will. I will say the one that because it helps me. Because you can't finish love matter from Genesis to Revelation. We've not finished. Sure you know we've not finished love matter. At the back of Revelation, we are still talking about love. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Don't be deceived. In fact, you can't survive without love. I don't know. I don't know anyone to love me. I don't, you, are, you, you are just exhibiting your, your need for love. Go, 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 mm. go, go. You can't survive without love, sir. Why do you think people commit suicide? Okay. Why? The guy rounds it up and says it is better to die than to live. That's what it means to commit suicide. He has concluded nobody cares nobody can care nothing can and he, do you know the pain of committing suicide do you know the intentionality of yes. checking the kind of cord you use <laughs> <laughs> you better all check gang, gang, gang. This, this one will not break <laughs> then you know <laughs> it depends on the kind of suicide anyway because even if it's a sniper do you know the chance of drinking that in and the pain oro do you, i can't even call it pain. oro is the name the pain you will go through before your intestine. 
and he goes through that pain and he foams and he foams and he dies and he thinks he's better. Look, this world needs love, oh. This world needs love more than you imagine, oh. Yes, my dear. So, like, let me, I, I have, we have noted that point because people like say, you want your life to be worth living. <laughs> But please finish your thoughts here. Yes, sir. Yes, also, please. that um, the God that you know is the God that you experience. Oh, absolutely. Some people know a God of vengeance. Yes. They don't know a tender God. Mm. Psalm 27, verse 4. You know, some people don't know a tender God. As far as they are concerned, he's a God of fire. God of miracle, send down fire. God of miracle, send down fire. God of Elijah, send down fire. God of Elijah, send down fire. Hey! God of Elijah, send down fire. God of Elijah. For what? For what? For what? What is he sending fire for? For if the fire come now, will you stay? You that you are calling the fire. Violent. <laughs> Hallelujah! desired of the Lord. This is one thing I seek after. This is what me I'm looking for. You can be looking for something else. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. What are you looking for? To see the beauty. David says beauty me I want to see of the Lord. Somebody says vengeance. I never say it's to build your vengeance. I want to see your beauty. Because it is what you look up for, you will find. He that seeketh, findeth. He that seeketh beauty, findeth beauty. He that seeketh redemption, findeth redemption. He that seeketh vengeance, findeth redemption. You have to seek the right. It's, David said, This is what I've been looking for. Don't be deceived. I'm coming to the house of the Lord for just nothing. I'm looking for something. And what am I looking for? To behold the beauty of the Lord God. Can you imagine how beautiful your God will be? Somebody else comes to God's house is looking for the redemption of the Lord. Someone else is looking for the money of the Lord. Yes, Someone else is looking for the Malachi or the pathway or something. But what you are looking for, you will find today. Amen. That's why you need to heighten what you are looking for. Don't be looking for more things. Mm. Nonsense, nonsense things. I want to see if God is a holy God. No, he's not a holy God. What you seek for, you will find. What you seek, you will find. Hallelujah. All right. So that's it. Look at what it says. Look at how Amplified Classic calls it. One thing I have, I, have I asked of the Lord that I will, that will I seek for, seek, inquire for, and insistently require that I may dwell in the house of the Lord in his presence all the days of my life. What for? To behold and gaze upon the beauty the sweet attractiveness and the delightful loveliness. That's what David is looking for. Oh, how I love thy Lord. Oh, how I love thy Lord. Some of us, you just come to church and say, whatever God wants to do for me, he will do for me. No! It's what you are looking for, he will do for you. Yes, yes. <laughs> Lord, just have your way. Eh -eh. What way do you want him to have? Yes, sir. He's everything. Yes, sir. He's everything to everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's what you need, he will be. Mm. That's why it says to the fraud, I'm fraud. Yes, uh, yes. To the clever, I'm clever. Yes, to the shrewd, I'm shrewd. Yes. To the mighty, I'm mighty. Yes. To the just, I'm just. And to the stupid, I'm stupid. Yes. You think you're clever? Yes. <laughs> 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 That's why it's not to me. Meet our journey. Yes, you think you're clever. Yes. You're just serving your conscience. Morality does not equate to yes, innocence is not equated to right. You don't be serving your conscience and think you are serving God. You will know this Jesus. Amen. In this house, I will teach you Jesus. Amen. There is a revelation of God I will grant to you. By mercy, you will see Jesus. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? Have you finished? One more. Oh, yeah, go ahead. No, you, you are wearing braids. So I'm in braids, I mean. Anyone wearing dreads has extra time. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So this um, last one, um, he said that 
women and I put like I took it personal. Okay. They said that um, <laughs> we'll women, <laughs> women define um, who they are yeah. by intimacy and product. Why men um, men know who they are by productivity. Productivity alone, yes. And, uh, yes, yes, yes. Very true. If a man doesn't have money, his countenance changes. Mm-hmm. Just check the brothers here. You need to see the power of self. <laughs> you, think, you think brothers are humble like that? May Malachi come to their hands. See them, see them, say, there's no brother in virtue. There's no brother. Let Malachi touch their hand. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you are ready for what you are asking for. Amen. Amen. All right. So that's a very good one, Tolani. Thank you very much for that addition there. Yeah. So, um, yes, Shizzy, quickly. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. So, do marriages and um, how they like to have big types of marriages? Do we have traditional marriage? Yes, traditional marriage. marriage. Yes. You see where the married people are concerned now? They are facing their lives. <laughs> Oh, possible. Yes. So you're not fighting your choice. Yes. Please, but whatever you get, what you get. Yes. You don't have you to look for what you didn't start at the end of the game. Don't, don't do, you, do you get that? Start. Even in athletics, when you are running off your course, uh. you leave lane one and go to lane four, or you leave lane four, come to lane one, and say, I'm go back to. They say, No, foul. You have cheated. <laughs> you, do you know what I'm talking about? You start your game as tennis. That long tennis is long tennis. Nobody's angry that you took a long bat, but you can't take a short bat and expect it to grow in the journey of the game. Nobody's fighting. If you want traditional, and traditional is Baba, 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 Baba blessing, a car, you know, ever rasa, mommy, 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 daddy, mommy, mommy, daddy, why that's traditional marriage, and we cannot fight you. Yes, for choosing traditional you know people want to just dodge everything they don't want to accept that there are rules of engagement mm. come to a teaching like this they say no 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 i can't come i can't come it's around the it's close to a jota it would have been close to your house do you understand what i'm saying and for free you are being taught the word of life for free but you say no 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 the one we pay for is the one that they will tell him skilly 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 I'm unavailable. The one that will teach you wisdom. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I might be joking, but you know I'm not joking. Yes, uh-huh. I might be cracking and be playing. Just, just trying to keep up. All right? Just so a reminder. Traditional, contemporary, and Christian. Christian marriage is guided by the word. Mm-hmm. Contemporary is guided by societal modernization, civilization. It's okay. Nobody's saying, What's up? My, my, uh, me and my girlfriend, me and my girlfriend. Nobody's fighting you. Just between you and your girlfriend like that. Until you realize that some people that are old arrows in the invisible realm. They are not playing. They are looking for who to give you. You will now know that Adurande, I'm telling you. That you need to be strong in the spirit. Yes, I think we are playing with our lives. If we are just empty, by now they would have fried us up. Yes. Think because I'm speaking English, I will eat you and your blood. Hmm. See, you just marry fine wife and you just be going on the streets. Yeah, yeah. Because your name is fine girl, fine girl. Yes. There are people angry that you have sheep. That shape, they want to dishape it. Just for that, your shape. You don't believe me? May you never find out. Amen. That's just the best thing. May you never find out. Because I borrow find out. I borrow a drain, you know. I borrow a Oriuki. One day I went to Oriuki like that. We're close to the clouds. JJB Mujoko. You like the. And they pray for now. You know that kind of thing. Uskafu shiliota, gelebo bolobo si de hata, grande de 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 de. Ukabaya lava. I saw one man of God there by that side. The guy brought files. Started. 
I thought it was a joke. It was not a joke. Oh. It's not a joke. It started by name. Ha! You are cool. No be people name the Ori Oke pass as the Ori Sale. When I, I had to look, I saw more calling names for destruction. Hmm. I'm not kidding you. You know, I, you know, I don't exaggerate. You know, I don't lie. Take it from me. I'm too old for that. You didn't know the health I tried to So if I just, I don't, and I know how Fabu, I don't. Uh -huh. Ah, man, when I look, I see fire. My God, let this cloud follow this man and remove this one on the seat. Change his life. Scatter this one's head. Oh my day, open my eye like this. I say, I say, people are controlling demands. They just say, no, laugh is beautiful. Jews. and nobody is praying for you nobody has your name on a list only one you with destiny i'm telling you sir before god and i lie not what people do and the the funny thing is that that prayer will answer So when we are speaking, don't think I'm just speaking English, oh. Yes, sir. Don't underestimate it because of our size, oh. Yes, sir. There's a mighty work going on yes, here. Sir. So that you don't think yes, I'm, I'm not playing with anybody. Hey, let's just get it right. Are we together, please? Yes, sir. So when I we're sharing this, take it seriously. Take it seriously. It will look like I see, ah, no, 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 no. I was telling one of my sons the other day, he was talking, I said, ah, don't talk. We're alone, no. I said, don't talk too much. Don't talk too much. Let them not hear you. He said, ah, we're just to get in my office, so. <laughs> I don't know if you get the picture. Just me and him. I said, shh, don't say to ah, in my own office, so. I said, because you are connected. They are hearing you loud over there. Spirit, I, I don't mean this to make you uncomfortable. We don't self-fear here. But to not be aware of reality, you are not ready for life. Uh -huh. you, you have to grow up. You know, after they pamper you like Phoebe them, pamper you, how you are to do show, show, biscuit. Go oh, show, we are feeding you to grow up. Oh, yes. Eh? Yes. As you are growing up, you have to be a man. Nobody will exchange your destiny. Amen. Their voice will, will deplete from them before they call your name. Amen. I think that these things are well, until they do it. God forbid. They just don't even wait for that five minutes. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Go ahead, Flo. Yeah. Quickly. God bless you there. Thank you. You're well blessed. You're blessed. Oh, yes. 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 Wisdom for life. Very good. Oshie, don't forget that thing. Brain and beauty. Matthew 25. It says there were 10 virgins. You remember that story? 10 virgins. The Bible said five were wise and told us five were foolish. Let's start with it. Those foolish ones did not marry the bridegroom. Do you remember they did not follow the bridegroom? Do you know the story? I didn't write it. It's our Lord Jesus that told us. You remember the story now? So you can be a virgin and be a fool. And you know what virginity refers to? Chastity, discipline, character, honesty, purity. You can be holy and be a fool. There are two different lanes. Jesus was one of You know what I used to say? If Jesus talk, a guy in the other person should not sleep. After Jesus, your president general among the nation, we salute you, president general. Jesus is everything. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. You see, when you hear me, if you hear me well and you hear me talk like this, you might think I'm just cracking joke on Jesus. It is that I've come to internalize my love for him. My regard is subconscious. It's no longer I'm consciously honoring Jesus. Mm -hmm. I have come to honor him with everything I have. He is everything. This Jesus, this Jesus that I just call him Jesus. So if Jesus talk, or guy is full stop, it's not comma. Do you understand what I'm saying? He now says there are five virgins that were wise and five were 
Why the categorization? He's telling you virginity is not enough. He's telling you purity is not enough. He's telling you that you need to carry wisdom. If it is on this earth, though, wisdom of, must follow any other virtue you possess. Mm. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, I'm not the one that wrote it now. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. One of the characteristics of a wise person is that he always has reserve before the day of need. Hmm. You have already gathered reserve before they needed it. You are not giving out out of generosity. The other ladies came out and said, please give us more oil. They said, no, 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 no. We're sorry. We're sorry. We understand your need, but we're virgins too. We need our oil. That's the market. Go and buy your own. Hmm. I pray that the Lord will help all of us. Look how it says. Five of them were foolish, thoughtless, without four thoughts. Are you seeing it? Yes, sir. You know, I, I, my ink is not inside this Bible. If it's inside the manual, it's not inside this electronic. <laughs> because some people used to think that we, we wrote Bible. I didn't write Bible. I used to feel that way too sometimes when I hear some pastors. That's why I'm saying it to you. You, you, know, you don't know what I'm saying. You hear them quote some scripture, it's as if they wrote it inside. <laughs> Thoughtless, without forethought, and five were wise, sensible, intelligent, and prudent. Tell me your own. Very important. Just be saying, I told you the lady, sir, I don't know why I feel jam. I'm like, sorry. And I'm a virgin. I can never forget that day. I had to see who can bear me witness. Yeah. You know, when you are alone, it's counseling. I, I had to, as I came, I had to, you know, who can help me conceive this question? How do you relate? Because most women, they spend so much energy on keeping chastity that they are senile. When it comes to any other contribution in a discussion, it is just spending. They believe that the first thing every man is looking for is their their body, so they spend so much energy keeping it that they forget to be useful in the relationship. We we'll deal with that today. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Most Christian churches cannot contemplate any other conversation other than chastity. Only shekushe, only shekushe. Don't do shekushe. But also do other things, sir. Yes. Most times, as you are telling them, don't do Ishekushi. Don't do Ishekushi. That's what they do Ishekushi. <laughs> do you not know what I'm saying? Who knows what I'm talking about here? Yes, now. Let me repeat myself. That means those that they are saying, don't misbehave. The more they are saying, don't misbehave, that's how the girls are misbehaving. You want me to get Belego come? <laughs> Idiots. With all this, this you are hearing. All this, this you are hearing. All this, this you are hearing. Don't get Belego. Because it is not self-will alone that keeps people. You need wisdom on life. Wisdom. wisdom. Someone say, I receive wisdom. I receive wisdom. Put up your right hand. Say, I receive wisdom. I receive wisdom. Say, I will never be foolish again. I will never be foolish again. <laughs> my life. My entire life. My generation. My family. Everything. I will never be foolish. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are you ready for tonight? Yes, sir. Thank you for those um, updates. And let's just go. So let's start with that scripture once again. The opening scripture, Philippians 4, verse 19. You know, like this dress it tonight. I see like I just look, look that part. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> playing too much, but I'm not playing. No, see, let's go. Are we ready? Yes, sir. See. We laugh. There's nothing, all this is your seriousness. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's look at it. Are we together tonight? Yes, Philippians 4 19. Everybody, we're going to read. If you're a child of God and you are in this house, we're going to read it out loud and clear. Look on the screen. One, two, go. Let's read the Amplified Classic as well. Want to go? And my God will be ready to supply you with his food for every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So I was saying on Sunday, Spirit of God, take over this meeting. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, I was saying on Sunday, I was trying to say on Sunday that 
Love is not something you wish for. It is a need. Love is a need. There's no body that is above the need for love. It's a, it's a level playing ground for everybody. We all need love. How are you, my dear? Confidence, ba? Yes. Where have you been? I've not seen you in two weeks. I've been seeing one Sunday. Yes. Yeah. There's nobody that is above the need for love. And the Bible says God shall supply our need, including the need to be loved. Are you listening? Yes. Every day of your life going forward, I pray this will stay with you that God is trying every day to supply your needs. Amen. God is a God of supply. The Bible says he has a duty to supply. And what is he supplying? Not just things generally. He's supplying our needs. Somebody's need, right? the Bible tells us that these three things abide. First Corinthians 13, 13. Faith, hope, and love. Remember? And it says the greatest of it is love. God's job includes supplying us with hope every day. Hope so we can cope. Every day. A life, one day life without hope is a problem. They say somebody can live days without food. But for a man to live lacking hope is an invitation to dying. So God supplies hope. When a poor man sees a rich man, the poor man looks on the rich man with some expectation and says, please give me something. That seeing somebody else is a sense of hope. Mm. That please, I don't know what to eat. I don't know what to do. But I am hoping something will drop from your pockets today. Some of us don't go like beggars. We go with like corporate style. Can I do anything for you today? That's another language of hope. That's sad. This today, oh, by the token of your goodness, when I do something for you today, you will do something for me tomorrow. Guess what? Even prostitutes have hope. Close that well. Even prostitutes have hope. Do you know it's a lot of work to be a prostitute? Yes, sir. I'm not one. I've never been one, but I can imagine. Eh? Yeah. To stand on the road in the dark, in the cold, then you wait and wave and invite someone you don't know before in the hope for your survival. It's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of... Eh? Thieves, ba? Have hope too, ba? Yes. That they plan and they for a But you know, they, they sit down. They sit down. <laughs> but it's good, it's good, it's good. I like that. They sit down, plan, conceive, and they hope and sometimes even pray yes. that they will succeed. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. They pray. They structure. They trust God. So I'm trying to tell you that everybody's breath of life depends on... And guess what? Matthew 5.45 says God allows the same rain of hope that comes for the farmer come for the thief. He says he will not discriminate on who he will shed the hope of sunlight on. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So this God has not discriminated and he owes every human being a source and strength of hope. It's only the ones that refuse the hope that God gives that God can't do more than that for you. And don't forget, your invitation to die is your choice. Death of God, does, God is not threatened by death or dying. Apostle Paul is not threatened. He said to, for me to die is gain. Dying is not a threat. I'll kill you. For some people, it's a, it's a choice. He says, for me to stay here is for your good. Do you guys remember that scripture? Yes, sir. Philippians 1. So, what I'm trying to say is that the same God that supplies hope, supplies faith. Now, if he supplies hope, does not fail with hope. He does not fail with supplying faith. Then he told us love is the greatest. Then it's consistent to support us to conclude that he will supply love. Do you guys get how I arrived at that? Yes. Yes, First Corinthians 13, 13 says that God is also, but look at it. It says that you may be the children of your father which is in heaven. He was talking to everybody. He said, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and the good. The son doesn't come out and cover the good, bad person, so we're not giving you son today. Mm -hmm. No. God is a God of all. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Look, the problem with 
this understanding of scriptures that I teach is that if, or should I say what I hear some people teach, if your scriptural doctrines don't list consistently across mm -hmm. every scripture, that we have to dodge one for your scripture to be true, mm -hmm. then you have not yet understood what we are teaching. If it is true that God doesn't discriminate against the good or the bad to allow sun to come on them, I can tell you God doesn't discriminate against the good or the bad to give them hope for faith or love, either of the three. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Are you really listening? Yes, sir. In fact, do you know what, how big it is? The Bible says God admits in 1 John 4, verse 8, I am love. Deal with it. Every day we see God everywhere. Romans 1 was talking, it says that the invisible things of God are made on by the visible things that we see. Yes. The sun that you know, shines by the morning, the flower that comes, the river that flows, the sparkle in a baby's eyes, the tenderness of love. You cannot deny there is a God somewhere. We understand this God's goodness somehow. The Bible says in Acts 14, 17, nevertheless, he never left himself without a witness in that he did good to men by giving them food, food, food. Everybody can eat. See what it says. Nevertheless, he left not himself without a witness in that he did good and gave us rain. Rain is a sign of God's goodness. Are you listening, please? Rain is a sign of God's goodness from heaven and fruitful seasons. Everybody, a farmer that does not know Jesus Christ's farm and is reaping his harvest tomorrow. Are you, I, do you, ah, some of your farmer, some of the food you eat are not burn, made by Christians, though. Ah? Yes, Promise me everybody that so paper to you is a Christian. Nonsense. It's not true now. The last year, man, that you boss you from, okay, you guys know you see here. Or kilishi, or what do you eat? Huh? Oranges. It's so, you must understand that every human being has a chance and is a reflection of God. Hey! Yes, sir. Now, hear what I talk? Yes, sir. Never look at a person again and discriminate is not born again. Yes, if you do that, you are not born again yourself. You must look at people through the lens of humanity, not Christianity. Mm. Are you listening? Yes, sir. So when we, when we go up and down, you go in and out, you must carry the consciousness that this is a human being that God created. This is God's product. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Don't discriminate from anybody. Don't even discriminate from a leper. You must treat everybody with a sense of regard. The person that has crossed eyes does not mean he's less human. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? He might not look like you, but I promise you he's God's creature. We must have that understanding that God rules in the affairs of men. When we go everywhere, these poor, the rich, God doesn't send. He said, go back to that Matthew 5.45 so I can learn this thought. I have a lot to say. Matthew 5.45. Quickly, I have quite some to say and I want to get into it. Roshan <laughs> Koba. It will come. He says that God doesn't allow this. I want to show you this account. Evil on the good. And he says what? And send it rain on the just and the unjust. It, it, it's, who, please, who is talking? Uh, it's not just God now. Jesus. When you say God, you make it look very... It's Jesus. I want you to know Jesus is the description of... See, eh? the Bible says he pleased God to make the of the God Edward bodily dwell in Christ. He's the brightness of his image, the express image of his person. And he upholds all things by the word of his power. Hebrews 1.3. You must understand that Jesus is the finite source of life. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. Without him was not anything made that was made. Are you getting what I'm ready to say? Jesus is absolute. Uh -huh. if on that ground, I want you to see somebody who knows every... Okay, you have gone to Hebrews on that. Ah, you guys are following me these days. Though. Thank you. He says, yeah, okay, let's just read it now since you are there. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he made, and made all things, he, he went by himself, forged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the, the majesty. See what this one says. He is the sole expression of the glory of God. The sole expression. The light being, the out reign of radiance of the divine. And he is the perfect imprint and the very image of God's nature. If you ever want to know what God looks like, look at Jesus. Are you listening to what I'm saying? This is very powerful. That's why I'm glad for the scientific proof that Jesus came. I'm so glad that Jesus came. Ah, that was a very big link for me to believe the Bible. Mm. Yes. That truly Jesus came, then there's a God somewhere. Yes, sir. 
Glory to God. So on that note, I want us to see the wisdom of God. Go back to that Matthew 5. I just want you to see that it says both on the evil and the good. And the just and the unjust. So he, he knows the unjust is not unqualified from God's goodness. That's what I'm trying to say. The unjust, the evil, also benefits from God's goodness. <laughs> this should change your philosophy a bit. That you think because you are born again, you are the one that is exclusive. Being born again is a journey to a new level with God. It initiates you from having God just as your God to having him as your father. Guess what? Some servants can benefit more than sons. Ask Eliezer. Abraham was willing to give Eliezer everything he had just because he was a faithful servant. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> I need to change the water I'm drinking. All right, so take a look at what it says. So on that note, let's go back to that Philippians 4 one more time, verse 19, and then I'll lead it into what I want to say tonight. Please, we'll run fast tonight, okay? And then we'll just trust God for questions and answers, and we'll be blessed. So tonight, I've titled tonight's discussion, Love, Loving, and Living Right. Choosing love, loving, and living right. Choosing love, loving, and living right. Tonight's discussion is to speak about your ability to choose right for those that have not chosen. And for those that have chosen, how to love right. And for those that have chosen, how to live right in the circumstance of your love. That's why I said where there's a lot to say. Then, children, you have to behave yourself. We are recording. All right? Mm -hmm. Let's enjoy ourselves today. All right? Thank you. Please, parents, help me take care of them. We don't want that. If they have to go and sleep upstairs, let them go. Now, today, about, but my God shall supply all your need. Do you agree with me that love is the need? Yes. Yes, yes, sir. We need love. We all need love. Hmm? We all need love according to his riches in glory and what i i remember it really was one that was telling me that one of the things that he understood was that you cannot truly love anybody until you really love yourself and if you will love yourself you need to love god first do you remember we said something about that yes, yes, this is not just a theory to make you love god and just become religious no the truth is that you remember i taught you about spirit soul and body the three of them can respond to love because God is love. And love is a spiritual conversation. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the three of them can respond to God because God is love and love is a spiritual conversation. But you see, the love of the man that is in Christ comes from spirit, soul, and body. And what that means is that if you understand the love of God in Christ Jesus, your response to God's love is different. Romans 8.32. So what that means is that if you look at what God did to express his love for you, believing that God loves you enough to believe is a hard thing to believe. I want you to stop being self concerning this love matter. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The reason I said so, and I'll show it to you. See, let's just quickly. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also give us, including a good relationship? First John 3 1 he says behold what manner of love the father has given unto us that we should be called the sons it's a beautiful manner of love first John 3 1 behold what manner in other words what an incredible quality of love the father has given shown bestowed on us that we should be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God ah. The reason that the world does not know, recognize, acknowledge us, is that it does not know, recognize, or acknowledge him. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So if we're here tonight and you're listening to me, I'm simply saying that your understanding of who you are begins on the tangent of knowing God. Any man not in Christ may not be able to, and you can even be in Christ, but if you don't know this thing, you can be hanging. So it's about so what is the part of God that we are saying you should know to be able to know yourself are you listening is the part of what God has done for you 
how God has loved you. You need to know that. You see, that understanding makes you no longer disqualify yourself from some people's love. It makes you no longer feel unfit or unworthy to be loved. I don't know how bad your history was, but that knowledge makes all of that history washed away in the blood. It's so powerful. Jesus literally has demonstrated it by our faith that your history can go into oblivion when you receive his love. That's why he says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are for forgotten. They are gone away. He said, behold, all things have become new. It's only in Christ we have that opportunity to be in the same course of life and be new in the same course of life. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? The other, the only other way some other religious preachers is that we are born again. Who does that? <laughs> Inside the same life. Yes. They do the, the way others can preach it to you is that you have to terminate one. Okay. Then you come back at 20 or why and we are you. Why are you? Whatever. Why are you? Why you? Why are 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 you? Are you listening to what I'm saying, please? Yes, you know, I'm speaking to you tonight with the hope and prayer that what I'm saying to you will not just be mere words, Amen. but it will register your spirit Amen. as life Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So you need to understand first that how God wants you to live starts with a chemistry. So let me just say, tell you something up front. Although this might be something someday in the future I will have to explain to you later on or refer to later on, but let me just tell you something. God does not want you to live your life. He wants to live it for you. Pastor, what do you mean? I just told you the truth. Up front, it's an advanced truth. You know how you just bring E equals to MC square from nowhere to just explain something and go back. So, some of you don't know what that is. Just, just keep looking straight, okay? <laughs> so, ah, it would, it's, uh, Equal, what's MC? MC. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you with me tonight? Yes. yes. You know this Chile. Your registry needs updates. There are many other. You can use Mac There are many other Mac MCs. Why is your no more that feed your own blank? Your registry. <laughs> and they still respect him around those areas too. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I guys get what I'm trying to say here. Yes, so, what I want you to see tonight is that God's will is that you no longer live a life. Let me just show you a scripture that can help me build the points. Are you with me tonight? Yes, sir. First Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13, 14, and 15. Just follow my thoughts. You, you, I hope you will get the points. I, I know I will deliver that. It's very simple, but you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13, 14, and 15. Let's look at it together. Is it there? You guys are doing faster today. What's going on? Ha! You need to tell us what you are doing. No? It's where prayer bar. Amen. So, are we together? You know that I said we are talking about choosing love, loving, and living right. All right? So, let's look at this. Are we together? Let's read quickly, please. One, two, go. For whether we be beside. Okay, so let's read it in another translation. Eh? Huh? This one. Should we read it in. Um, should we read it? Okay. Because of time, let's read it in a, a message. Put message up also, not don't remove anyone, just put message also. Message. Okay, so are we together now? Are we together, please? So. <laughs> Why are you guys laughing? If you read this in Pidgin English, how would it read? If you read it in Yoruba language, how would it sound? You see, some of us don't read Bible to this point. We just close it at Mark. If you read your Bible, that's why I used to tell you the God of the Bible. Don't let people introduce you to your God. Know him for yourself. Are you listening to what I'm saying, please? My sister, good evening. Come and sit down. Give her a chair. Uh, programs. You are supposed to excuse yourself. Or your hand. Let us sit down. We're expecting more people. Bring more chairs if you have more chairs. Please. We're expecting more people. You know this relationship. Now we're here when this week, this month. Are you ready for this month? Yes, sir. So you know we've not done relationships since February. Yeah. I don't even think I taught relationship in February like that. But this month, Every corner, we will talk about it. I will not leave any part on the I said I will even extend to divorce and single motherhood. So just get ready. 
Are you ready for this? Thing? <laughs> Can we try it together? One to go. For if we are beside ourselves, mad, as some people say, say this guy is your own is too much, by your. He say if they, they just, he say some people call us mad, mad. You know, he say it is for God and concerns Him. If we are in our right mind, it is for your benefit. So if we go extreme, is that God is shocking us? Why am I trying to draw your attention to this? Is talking about the new Christian because it's in verse seventeen it says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So look at what he now says. Though. He now says, if I acted crazy, I did it for God. If I acted over, overly serious, I did it for you. <laughs> crazy for. See what he says. For the love of Christ controls and urges and impels us because we are of the opinion and conviction that if one died for all, then all died. You see the extreme this guy is going. Let's look at the next line. Christ's love has moved me to such extremes. Are you listening? Yes, Come on, are you listening? Yes, Say a big amen. amen. Has Christ's love moved you to extremes? Has the love of Christ moved you to extremes before? What extreme have you ever done for the love of Christ? I hope we're listening. Yes, sir. Don't let Victor distract us. Don't mind this. Have you, ever, have you ever gone extreme for the love of Christ before? I want to ask you, what extreme have you ever done? Mm. Let me tell you something. I'm not the one I wrote it to. A lot of us, we've never done any extreme for Christ. Mm. That's why I said it's an advanced discussion. But let me just put it on your lap to go and deal with it before we talk about it. If you've never done any extreme for Christ, the love of Christ has not moved you. Mm. If, you if you understand this love, it will make you do some extremes. Mm. Yes. Yes. If there are no extremes... If nobody has said, are you mad? Mm. It has not moved you. <laughs> if nobody has asked you, is it not too much? It has not. I'm not the one that said it. Before you think it's an opinion. <coughs> you must have that understanding that look, for me to live is Christ. That is what I'm talking about. Let's play with it a little. It says, Christ's love has moved me to such a thing. His love is, has the first and last word in everything we do. Is that your... You know, I told that... God's real desire is that you no longer live for yourself. That is real desire. That you no longer have, that he takes over your life. Guess what? That's the desire of every spirit. The real motive of every spirit is to possess. Possession means to handle you spirit, soul, and body. The way demons possess people, ah, I will not come out. That's how God wants to possess you. You will be head. You will be head. You are head. That's how God will spirit to a head. Because that's how spirits hijack us. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, not this one I just be saying, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. All this one. He never jack you. <laughs> never jack you. Or you can still form composure for God. 100% steez. Spirit of God's flesh. <laughs> when he holds you, you will know that you are no longer of your own reflexes. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, the pleasure of God is that he takes over your spirit, soul, and your body. That's why I call him Holy Spirit to dwell in you. That's why. Holy Spirit is not a name. It's a spirit. It's a Holy Spirit dwelling in you. He's making it clear that he describes him as Holy Spirit. Even when they want to call him another name, they say Holy Ghost. It's not The Holy must follow it. Do you guys get what I'm trying to say? Yes, if it is the Spirit of God, He wants to dwell in you fully. 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 That's why it tells us to be being filled. Look at the language. Be filled. Let Him take over. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Yes, so follow me here. It now says, first and last word in everything, our firm decision to walk from this focused center. You see what He's saying? From this position. One man died for everyone. That puts everyone in the same boat. All of us are in, together. He died for all. Now, follow me. Next verse. Verse 16. Eh? 15, sorry. 15, go, go, go. And he died for all that they which live. Look at what he said, though. That they which live should he, not henceforth live unto themselves. God doesn't want you to live for yourself. Now, don't forget, I'm, I'm taking a conversation on choosing love. Love, love. Loving and living right. So follow my thoughts. Are you listening? God says, I don't want you to live for yourself again. That's what, that's what he said here. 
I, please, please, let's agree. Is that what he said here or not? He said, he said that, they, that, that he died for all. No, uh, that they which live, that is you and I, should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Who is that? Jesus. He's saying you should not live for yourself again. Okay. You say, no, 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 no. Matthew 6, 33. Is that what he told us? Seek first the kingdom of God and every other, I will be responsible for every other thing that your life will be added for, that will have to be added to your life. God doesn't, doesn't. Well, follow me. I'll just read three translations in this one. Then I'll say. So he says, and he died for all, so that all those who are yeah. no longer to and for themselves, I leave that to them, to and for themselves, but to and for him. Are you seeing that? So God wants you to live for him. <laughs> Please, do you understand what I'm saying here? Yes, it says, could die and was taken for that. Let's continue what I'm saying. He included everyone in his death so that everyone could also be included in his life. A resurrection life. A far better life than people ever lived on their own. So God doesn't want you to live on your own. Let me tell you something. Concerning your life, God has an opinion about everything. The suit to wear, the house to live, who to marry. If you ever ask God, what should I eat tonight? He has an opinion. Mm. He has an opinion does not mean it to be so. Mm. Mm. It is his opinion. That's why Romans 12 was saying that do not be conformed to the body, but be transformed by the renewing of mind. So you can approve that which is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. There's a perfect will of God of who you shall marry. There's an acceptable. It's, 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 it's also sources on you. That's why when God named, told Adam, go and name the animals, he had an opinion of the names. When Adam got it, he said, well done, well done, well done. Well done. All the names you've called it, well done. That's my guy, that's my guy, that's my son. Do you get what I'm saying? God has an opinion. Don't think God is just there. God, I'm just God. No. He wants to live through you on earth. Hmm. He wants to breathe through you. Hmm. He wants to touch people through you. As I said, it's an advanced conversation. But why I said all that is to say God has an opinion about what your chemistry should be with somebody. Not just from an imposture of your his will over your life is that you grow to the point where his will becomes your pleasure his will becomes your pleasure. so the supply of god for you in terms of love comes to you because We will tell you that You have to admit it. This person is fine. There are many cars on the streets. They are very. They are not, if you cannot touch them, those are the that we flare at you. Do you know what I'm saying here? Many good things are. I 
17 and all. It says, Wherefore, be not of all wise, but understand what you doing the week I mean, I don't believe personally. I personally believe that one of the charismas just Christ used to do in his disciples was to find. You have to be fine. The word. Some of us should change ourselves with an early decision. The girl you are choosing too early for your destiny. If you allow yourself to grow enough, you will get to the maturity where you can know that this is the will of God for my life. Because some people get to a point and then they choose and then they realize that many people are going to small. And you have to be sure. And I mean, things are concerning your life. And it's not just a relationship, but if it's going to make you make a decision to extend it to every area, don't be carnally minded. Yes, sir. Don't be carnally minded. So when you come here now and look at us and say, ah, what was this place? If you are spiritually minded, you know that the life of God is here. Yes, sir. That the power of God is here. If you choose to discover with wisdom, you will discern that this man is a prophet. There are women that without the prophet talking, they knew that this one is the son or son of God. But most of us are carnally minded. There's no stees, no nerd stage four, no drums by that one. Look at that, they very small. They can play. Warriors shall arise. Wrong or guy, you will manage wrong for the rest of your life. What I'm mean, I mean, is not the best now. Using wrong, you choose wrong. That is, this is wrong. That person, you choose wrong, you have to manage wrong for the rest of time. The Bible says it is the food that says it not publicly, not, but in his heart that says, Oh God. He did not say it out, but he said it in his heart. And in his heart are his actions. Anyone who does not take your God as seriously as you take it is not worthy of you taking him seriously.
that I don't know, my lots of friends enjoy hearing because some of the things that they say, like we did it. We did it with scriptures, with scriptures. Let's read that. Because I didn't know my mind. God is the one that says something. If it's so let's go and rest. Okay? We'll let you hear. I just come back from my office now. Going back with my research, forming policies for her. Uh, but if it's what seven, 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 seven. what am I trying to draw your attention to? That you need to share. That You got something. If you have adults, yes, we want to talk to some adults. Talk here. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Because I want to talk about chemistry. The next thing about choosing right, are you listening or about the right person? Or a wrong person it is somebody that you don't feel attracted to physically. Don't let anybody force you. Don't let them see. And I think men underestimate the power of their bronze. What the bronze mean? Bronze. What does it mean? What does it mean? Physical strength. Yes, in contrast to intelligence. So, so when I have beauty, also no brains. So I, I don't know if that's good to know. But you know it's true. Yes, sir. But some men also have brains, but no brains too. So I'm saying, choose beauty and brains as a brother. What do we mean by the brain? I mean somebody that can stimulate you intellectually. Listen, at the number of every emotion is the mind. And if the mind can I not handle it? The body can't. That's why you see some people that they are naked, but they can't respond to the woman's nakedness because their mind is shut down. It's owing hundred million dollars. No matter your nakedness and your dance, he's not seeing you, sir. They say the Listen to what I'm saying here. What do I mean by that? Your mind must connect with the beauty of the person. Now listen to this. We're speaking about chemistry. And your choices, the thought that is more for you is if you are choosing somebody for the wrong reasons. This is very important. You know, some people have poor background. They want their family or their spouse to make up for their poverty. Well, it's not impossible, but that motivation can be a trap, all right? The knowledge of your family background. A good family is always... What is a good family? A family that they are united together. That they have something in common. Some something that we realize that research has shown is that behind most problems in marriages is a long history of generational circumstances that produced eventually your own chapter of life. Yes. If you want to do well in your relationship, ask the person you are dating, tell me a little about how you grew up. Try that question. If you find out they already ask the person, how did you grow up? 
It will give you an idea of some things. You will not believe it that you just think that's how you are. You are actually a makeup of some DNA plus experience plus some outcomes. That's the truth. So you may be thinking this is just how you are. You are actually a product of some other people's mistake. You live with that mistake thinking is normal. So those are things to talk about. The point is that no matter how bad it is, there is hope. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Please? There's plenty of hope. Wow. See time on. Guys, should I should I should can I do we have some permission, Ba? Yes. Thank you. I'll try to be fast still. So there's ground to cover. So that understanding, when you meet the person, ask the person, please tell me a little about your history. Believe me, it's a question for deliverance. Believe me, I speak as God's servant. It's a question for deliverance. You might not know it, but along the line, you will understand some things, especially when you do it prayerfully before you ask the question. I'm not saying you ask that, let us pray. No, you have prayed. Then you come and say, how are you doing? Over a good bottle of whatever drink she prefers. I hope it's not alcoholic, you know? So, because answering that question over alcohol, the answer is different. Too. <laughs> The answer you will get under the influence of alcohol. I hope you are not drinking alcohol here. Okay, so, but I, I hope you get the point. So you ask that question. Tell me a little about your background. Listen to me, sirs, mas. Don't be hasty because your hormones are calling. Don't be hasty because your hormones are calling. The truth is that those hormones don't go down in marriage. Oh. Neither has sex been able to stop it. I'm not there. Some of you are not virgins anymore. You've had sex. Have you stopped wanting to have sex? It's going to be there. You don't shave a boy, you know. <laughs> Stretch forth your hands and pray. let's pray for this brother. All right, it's all right, all right. Praise God. In Jesus' name, are we together? So listen to me, please. Are we together, please? So you want to ask yourself very real questions. Are we listening? So that you don't get distracted just because of, let me tell you something guys i want to say this to you listen to this are you listening yes, sir. i want you to know that it is part of your assignment in life to control your response to your liking to a woman it's a responsibility they didn't tell me at home i found out in life that it's my job to control my appetite in life it's a job. I'm telling you, maybe parents forgot to tell you. If you don't, it will, it will wreck you. It will wreck you. Whether you are a pastor or anybody, it will wreck you. It's our job. Are you listening? But you know the interesting thing? It is also a woman's desire to be discovered. So that's why it's like two gay four. The man is curious. The woman is desirous. So it's like both of us are looking for ourselves as a sharp edge. We connect, everything works together. But that's not how it should be. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why the same woman says, after you like her, she says you too like woman. Is it not because you like that you are with her? <laughs> Does the liking for woman stop because I've liked you? No. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so the power behind what I'm telling you is that don't overestimate the woman's influence on your life. Don't. It's a truth. Listen to me. And I'm saying this to you, brothers. Listen. If you get it right, hey, stop shouting like this. You are distracting our message. If you get it right, listen. And I'm saying this to you sincerely. There will be no woman too good for you to marry. Oh, even Jeanette. boy. Must you think out loud? So, 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 are you listening to what I'm saying here? Please. You know, I'm the one that asked that your responses are good for yes. me. I'm, I'm bring it on, okay? So let's just, uh, it's fine. I can handle it. So what I'm saying is, you need to understand that you are good, sir. No woman does you. Mm. What you are as a man, you represent God. You are literally divinity in humanity. I'm telling you, sir. If you know your worth as a man, nobody will wreck you again. I'm coming to women. I'm not talking about women being reckless or worthless. No, I'm coming to that. Let's talk about the men first. Because if the men get it right, the home will sit up. Families will be better. Brother, stop looking down, sir. 
That's why I keep telling you in church, look up, look up. It looks like as if I'm, I'm, I'm looking for attention. You are reflecting how you have been looking down on your life. Phone has not even helped you now. Look up. Sir, if you know your worth as a man, I'm not talking about fine boy. Forget fine boy. Who is fine boy? We're talking about being a man. You are a man. You stand on two legs. You are not set to life. What are you saying? Some men, are, they, they, they still keep feeling small. Small. Because life has not told them what I'm telling you. The dignity of being a man. I think it's just ordinary that even heaven recognizes male child. <laughs> what you carry and then you submit it to one woman. That's why anybody that is going to take a hold of your hand must be worth your time. Yes, sir. Why will you carry such dignity and drop it on the lap of a witch? Oh. Why? And most men don't know this thing I'm talking about. They cower under the seeking for the approval and acceptance of the woman. And the women deep inside are craving for the attention of the man. Ask all of them that sitting here, including my mother. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's no woman that does not desire to be spoken to. Yes, sir. Even the one selling at Bojedi, yes. she does make up. Yes, you think it's ordinary, she does make up. <laughs> she does make up, space perfume. No women are, God said it from today. Your desire will be after the man. From to God said, go and read your Genesis chapter 3. God said, from now on, your affection will be after the man. He's all you'll be thinking of. Don't be deceived when women are forming body for you. They need our attention, they need us to be men and protect them. Am I making some sense here? That's why I'm at home. I tell my wife, I said, look. If you see me deal with my boys, it's so that you will never raise your voice at them again. Ha. I say, I want you to have soft life. That way you say, Arnold. What is he in? Arnold. Mm -hmm. That much. If I notice it, son, if I notice it, son, I come for you. You must understand. I defend it. Same way. I will nearly, you will not believe it's the same me. Why? Because it's our God given duty. Are you into what yes, If you know your worth, if you know your worth as a man to stand well, well. Let me say this to you. Listen to me, sirs. Brothers, hear me well. You are not defined by your money ratio. You are not defined by your pockets. God has given man dignity. If you lack it, you will feel smaller than it. You need that dignity of being a man. I'm not talking about money here. It's a consciousness of your purpose. It's an understanding of who you are. I'm not talking about pride. I'm not talking about ego. I'm talking about awareness. 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 That you see women, you understand your role among women. That this one should not suffer any loss because I'm here. Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying, sir. And I'm not trying to sweet talk you. Trust me. I don't suffer small for this life. Enough to tell you the consistency of this truth. So I am saying this that please, brothers, understand that your dignity, your confidence should be hidden in Christ, should be hidden in God. The knowledge of all you see, this will make you stronger. When you open your mouth, you are not talking jargon. Now, you know, one of the things I notice women don't like stupid men. Oh, I've seen it. Women hate idiots. The way they hate idiots, men, and you would think it's for me. They can't stand idiots. They are here. They are hearing what I'm saying, and it's true. They will just look at that guy is a fool. That, that guy is a fool. You will not believe it. Because they don't like to identify. Because they know there's tendency for them to behave like that. So they avoid it. They avoid it. They don't want stupid yeah, 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 on their body or their history or their person. So they don't want nonsense. Are you guys get what I'm saying? Yes, here? So when you are choosing, seek for these com conversations. I will also just add this as a token. Please, I will encourage you. Are you listening? Are you listening, please? Yes, Choose with some facts in mind. I told you on Sunday that I told Jiblo, go and find out who this sister is. Yes, Jiblo is abroad now. He's in Canada or somewhere now. I think he's in Canada. Nice gentleman was handling virtues for me on campus when I was away. And so I just I said, go and find out. Find out some history. Don't just jump because your hormones are clustering together. 
Hips is not all you will live with, sir. Lips is not all you need in your life. Fingertips are not sufficient. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. You will need something to interact with. You will need a mind that can reason with you. Let me say this to you. Listen to me. Not every woman need. And listen to me. God in such a way that they bring an on and uh, what's the word? flavor to this world. There are things about women is about specific to this one. Are you listening to what I'm saying? What do I mean by that? You can't just say all women are witches. That's not true. Before you even leave that statement, you will be proven to be untrue because your mother is probably not. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> So, what we are looking at here, are you listening to what I'm saying here? Yes, so, we must look at the statements and say, while we know what women like generically, we must also give the dignity to that woman to identify what she likes specifically. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Now, let me tell you something. There is no manual on how to raise a woman or how to raise a man. No better than the word of God. And I, 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 I cannot do all the justice that I know. And I don't know everything. But the little I know, I, I can tell you I know small. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> that small is useful. You understand? So, but I can't do the justice tonight. But I will just tell you some things about a woman that I think we should know generically. And then the one that will be useful for you specifically. All right? Quickly, let me just say this to you. One of the things I've come to know, and I've said before, is that it is given to us to know that by the physiology of a woman, by physiology I mean physical appearance of a woman, She's designed in a certain way. Number one, to be soft. Amen. Amen. Women are, the Bible uses that they are weaker vessels physically. They're designed to be softer. But their toughness is in their mind. Don't mind the tears. They are more powerful than you. Hmm. What you carry in muzzle, they carry in emotional stamina. That same eye that is crying, is making the heart hardened. <laughs> Let me just tell you the truth. Don't be deceived. When a woman is crying, pity yourself. <laughs> she might be pained. Fear what she will do after that time. I know. I know. Are we listening tonight? Yes, sir. So generally, a woman is soft, tender, built that way. Am I right? Yes, we also can discover easily from the mammary glands and the physical apparatus that a woman is designed to be attractive. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, That's why women do everything to be attractive. The one that we use fingernails, she will not forget to use it. To make her hair, she has to make her hair. She has to smell nice. She has to look good. She has to dress well. She has to do it, smell well and all of that. Because like I was saying on Sunday, most women never really grow to discover who they really are. We define them a lot by their physical stature. And it's not our fault. Because even them too don't know themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's whatever they present we are forced to take. And throughout life, most women never meet anybody to define them. Other than a boyfriend that says, you are fine now, what's up? Let's see you now. That's all. And for the rest of time, they are going to go with that. But don't forget, she was once upon a time a 13 year old girl. Yes, sir. Wondering what is going on with my body. What's go wondering what's happening to me. Wondering, ah, how come? What's, what, what's happening to you? Is this how you feel? Uh, then, so they walk in clicks to giggle and compare notes. Say, say, bello, say, say, well, no. You know, and then they check and then they, ah, okay, it's not doing like that. And after a while, they don't find their click or nobody's telling them. So they live alone. So, form, tomboy, form, whatever thing. They are left to no chance or choice but to define how they want to evolve. Quickly, they find a role model in the television. They look at somebody and this one's living the school life. This one's living the baby soft life. This one's so the, the woman is under a vigorous challenge to make decisions of what she wants to be or do or who she wants to become. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, now, God now bless her. She doesn't have a role model. Nobody to speak over her life. Nobody to protect or provide for her. She has needs. She realizes she needs sanitary pad. Daddy can't buy it. A boyfriend says, I will give you the money. You say she should not collect it. Even the first woman that did not have seen collected the fruits from me. She said she should not collect what? 
Eve that never had sin in her. She collected it and even, I said, I even gave her husband and said, you to eat, sir. So don't say a woman should not collect. You are not sensitive to the realities. Women have needs. They have needs. They have needs. And we must be interested in providing whatever God enables us to provide for them. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Yes, glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. So we must how that the woman is you know, attractive as the next point I'm making. Then I will say this. Because the woman needs to find trust early, she's curious. See, if you want to know the true mental stature of a woman, go and read Genesis 3. Before Eve ate the fruits. Those things that were described there are the consistent traits of a woman. Can you can we just look at it quickly? Go to verse um, 4 or 5 or something. 3, 4 or something. And then you shall not surely die first. It will be 5 then. I think it's 5. What is it? 5. And the woman said, uh, 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 5, sister. For God knoweth that then you shall open it. So give us 6. Let me just save time, please. Hurry up. Aha. The woman saw. The first thing we see about the woman is that she sees. Are you listening to women? Women don't just look, they see. Are you listening? That's why what you not see, the woman will see it for you. you what you are shouting about, she will see, ah, you see something. And we're not just talking about physical sight, they also see things you don't see. Eh? The first thing we see is that the woman saw that the tree was good. What did she see? She saw a tree and she knew that the tree was good. How do you see a tree? I know how it will be in your stomach. Meanwhile, don't forget, she has been discussing with a serpent. I want to ask you, what was the language of the snake? She to ask her. Then the snake would say, Then she would answer. And they, she was talking with an animal. And she could understand. Snake spoke. She answered. No, she heard it, understood it, and replied correctly. <laughs> That's powerful. <laughs> that is the stature of a woman. She can handle things that are beyond the physical. She can. A snake was talking to her, and she understood. She not only understand, she answered back. Are you guys getting what I'm saying here? Not that she has said, maybe you know, somebody just says something, she says snake, says, she, she just has you know, maybe dogs are barking or goats say, man, you to say, man, <laughs> you know, what I'm friend to you know what I'm saying, goat says, man, you to say, man, then the man says, man, man, you to say, man, man, ah, you guys are getting it. Then two of you now go together to the kitchen, oh dear, that means you are speaking the language that is at a level, sir. So let me tell you something. Even women don't know that much of power. That's what Eve had. Ability to converse with the extraterrestrial and make meaning out of it. Is it possible your tree has been talking to you? And you're not getting any meaning? Is it possible that birds have been chirping and you're not getting the meaning? That's not for tonight. So look at what it says. He said, and she was, saw that it was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eye. So women don't play with sights, sir. They don't play with sights. That's why I want to ask you today that you will have eyes that see. Amen. And when I'm talking about seeing, I'm not just talking about seeing, uh, like, I'm talking about seeing situation amen. that will inform qualitative judgment in your life. Amen. Can I hear a beautiful amen on that? Amen. Some of our parents never bequeathed this type of thinking to us. It's not your fault, but you will change in this church. Amen. When they see the quality of your woman, they will know that God has touched your life. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, we saw that it was good for food. I said, able to make one wise. So you see that the woman desires wisdom. She desires it. She was the first precursor for wisdom. That look, we need something that will make us wise. That's why women hate to be unwise or being perceived as stupid. But guess what? 
Fortunately, that's what they lack the most sometimes. So Proverbs 14, I was saying that a wise woman, you remember that I said wise woman builds? Yes. Because it takes wisdom to survive on this life. Or in this life. So, let's be clear. So the woman's choice of love, in my opinion, should carry bronze and who knows it? Brains. Am I correct? Bronze and brains. Bronze spelled B-R-A-W-N-S. And brains. Brotherhood, let me tell you something. The woman looks for direction. They look towards every woman, and I'm saying every woman. That's why a woman can listen to someone that is not her husband and hope that it makes sense. Yes, she can listen. She's listening. She's listening. I hope this man will not tell me this. Well, cannot blame them. Totally cannot blame them. You might not be very right, but you can't totally blame him because I'm not even sure if you are the one. The way you are behaving, are, are you sure you are wise for my future? <laughs> hey, the way you are behaving, are you able to make me wise? Huh? So the woman does everything to be attractive, to do everything, but believe me, among many things the woman wants is to find a man that truly cares, that gets her. Some don't even have aspirations again. They don't have ambition. It's just to marry and escape this wretched life. That's what I want to say to you. Beyond just your beauty as a woman, I want you to be interested in your productivity. It will make up for every intimacy you don't have yet. Are you listening? Whether marriage or not married, your desire should be to live a fulfilled life. Marriage is supposed to help it. Marriage is not the fulfillment. Marriage is to help you. Marriage is supposed to be a vehicle towards making you a happier person in destiny. So why marry when you will be sad all through? And why marry when you'll be crying all through and not be fulfilled? That's why I said, if you've not married wrong, pursue fulfillment, please. If you've not been able to find a person to marry, pursue fulfillment, please. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. Stay beautiful and trust God to give you a spouse. I'll close with these thoughts and I will take the communion now. Are we blessed tonight, please? Yes, sir. So in marriage, before you get married, I want you to have clear thoughts about what we call deal breakers. Some things are deal breakers. You know what I mean by deal breakers? So we had a deal. But now we are saying that deal can't work again. What are the kind of things that can happen in a relationship that can make you say it's a deal breaker? I've told you some already if you listen well. But I want to highlight a few that I think should help you. Listen, when a woman is no longer interested in learning or listening, then it's a deal breaker. You are going to just breed a witch. When a man stops before you get married, that's a deal breaker. If a man can't respect God, he will not respect you. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. If he cannot honor the God that gives him food, he will not honor you that he's looking at as an asset to. And most times, without telling you, most men think of women as assets. And when I'm talking about assets, I'm not talking about the one that we make that is that the property. Maybe the right word is property. She's my property. In a sense, yes. But that will limit your life as a brother. So woman, let me just say this to you. One of the things most men do by default without even telling us or accepting it is that we think that if a woman is good for our lives, the few years she comes to our life, our lives should get richer. In a sense, it's right. Oh. Once things start to nose die from you, it's a sign that you have not been additional to his life. Oh. So let me tell you this, woman. I want you to please be interested to your man. Are you listening to me? Be into that man. Stop living with one leg in the marriage and one leg afraid of what has not yet happened. I don't know if you get what I just said. They're afraid, will this marriage not work? So let me have my leg ready. Sorry, there. That in case it will not work, let me just be able to bounce out without falling. You cannot be demanding your best from what you have not given your best to. 
I'm demanding the best. I want the best of this one. Have you given it the best? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, Give it the best. Stop complaining. I will again, your men look to you for encouragement, not nagging. Don't treat your man like the way your mother treated you. Stop complaining and faults all around. If it is fault you will see all your life, I don't need you around me. Mm. Hey, but I have to tell him the truth. We agree. But not like his mother. You will create rebellion in his heart. I tweeted on it. He probably married you because you behave like his mother. But don't behave like his mother to him. Behave like his mother to the children. Like his mother his mother spoke to his father. Uh, uh, do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah? Be sensitive. Some women don't know the meaning of ego. You don't bruise ego in a man. It's that thing I call dignity. Some men can no longer stand square shoulder because of how a woman has spoken to them. Women, know the power of your sharp mouth. Let it encourage. Let it build. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Say better amen there. Amen. One more time, say louder amen. amen. You must understand the power. Some of the, my sons and daughters in this house, I call them sometimes, I say, go and speak to your husband. I heard her talking to the husband. The husband would think it is her. He doesn't know I'm the one pulling the strings. Go and encourage him. You might be laughing like a woman. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Women, listen to me. The power of your words are wealthy. They are life-giving. If you don't know it, you will tear down your marriage with anger. I'm not saying that it's perfect. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Yes, I'm not saying it's perfect, but be careful how you use your words. Don't be hasty in speech. Find out questions. You're a Christian. Live like one. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. You're a Christian. Ask questions lovingly. Now listen to me, brothers. We have fooled around long enough. This, your broke ass, is no longer tolerable. You need to make some money. Are you listening to me? You can't continue to excuse why you're not succeeding. Even when you're not succeeding well, respect her enough to communicate. There's nothing I'm telling you I'm not practicing on. My wife is seated. So that you don't think I'm just speaking good English. There's not, I communicate, I care. And I truly care. Trust me. So you communicate. You don't just say, I don't want to tell her anything. I don't want to tell her anything. She's a, she's a foolish woman, foolish woman. She will continue to be what you think she is. But there's a way when you realize this person is a gift of value. Not someone that you are here to just dominate and just trample upon. You call her, that I just want to gist you. That business didn't go through. Eh? Why not go through now? I know say you go late. Turn it to humor. Hey, let me just say this one. Listen to me. Women dread a man they cannot laugh, laugh with. Women, true or false? They want to be able to laugh with you. Brother, don't be the terrorist of life. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That we can't even crack jokes. I know some jokes are harsh, but please make the environment friendly enough for us to accommodate humor. Are you listening? Yes, so it's a good time. When the joke is not going right, open the window of humor. You can never go wrong opening that window. Anytime, even in business, if a situation is getting out of hand, open the window of humor. Do you understand? You can, it's a very quick, it, you know, it's an escape button. Pa, and it almost always, if you do it well, works. Yes, you know? I'll close with this intimacy so i've spoken technically on love and loving let me quickly close on this intimacy part praise the lord hallelujah. it feels very short right we are finished we've tried today hallelujah praise i just want to say this that both parties desire intimacy all right but intimacy somehow in my observation and please don't forget that whatever i've said today or anytime i speak either now or later is not absolute I make room for exceptions because we don't have, we're not the summary or the SI unit of knowledge. There might be new discoveries about womanhood that we have not mentioned or even known. But I'm saying based on what I have studied, 
And if there's room for more learning, I promise you I will update the discussion. Is that okay, please? Yes, so just by adventure, what I'm saying does not exactly suit your understanding. Trust me, I'm speaking by the Spirit of the Lord as led. It might not touch you now, but it might be useful for you later. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to speak about intimacy. One of the things that I think, and let me use the word intimacy and intelligence. Are you listening? Yeah, one of the things I think that most marriages lack is the blessedness of intimacy. And when we say intimacy, we're talking about the cordiality that should exist, that should exist between spouses, whether they are married or not married. There is a kind of cordiality that should exist. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now, I said in that other video that when you start dating, even heaven takes notes. Yes, sir. Say, no, 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 we're just dating. Who told you that? If heaven did not take notes, how did they know Mary and Joseph wanted to marry? How? That they sent an angel. They knew his house. Yes, they knew his house. They knew how he would feel. They knew that they were virgins. They, they've not been sleeping with each other. They are studying them. You people just think heaven is far. Heaven is watching you. The day you were talking with your friend that you want to go and discuss with someone, heaven is around us. They are watching us. I won't toast that baby. I imagine your angel, because we all have angels. Some of us are angels. We are not perceptive to them. But if you are perceptive to your angel, you don't have to you. If it's a bad woman, you don't have to say that thing that the Bible was doing here. That's what your angel must have been doing that day. But you're not hearing. Don't go and meet this guy. Some of you are saying yes to him. What made you say yes? I just want to say this to you. You need to understand that people are different under different situations. You meet somebody in the office. That person is not necessarily the same person at home. You are excited about a functional person. In that. That's not the same person in the house. You have to understand that. You meet somebody in a family meeting. She's respectful. Outside family meeting, she might not be. So don't make your judgments just on half measures of what you have seen. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? There are a lot of tests you should... And listen, you could even meet somebody among the company of people. She looks quiet. But when she's alone, she's a terrorist. When, with people, self-esteem. But with people... With so to be conscious of the intelligence in making this don't be deceived sir listen brotherhood control and manipulation is witchcraft sisterhood control and manipulation is witchcraft the word of God says in Lamentations 3.36, to subvert a man in his cause, the Lord does not approve. Yes, Anything you are before you get married does not get better in marriage. It only confirms it. It settles it. Just like money. If you are stingy before you got money, when money comes, your stinginess will grow. Become a strong tower. <laughs> Gum. Huh? The same way, if you are stupid before you got married, marriage amplifies you. Stupid. Stupidest. <laughs> so what's the point? Hear this. Make sure that you watch out for signs that manipulate. And if you see them and you try to correct them, Watch out for the response of the other person. <laughs> I'll say this to you. Let your relationship be guided by the wisdom of God. When I say wisdom of God, I simply mean that when you guys get to crossroads and you don't know what to do, take time to pray. Don't pray religious prayer and start to do revival. Mm -mm. It's prayer that, Lord, we're not enjoying ourselves. Be real with your God. We are having challenges here, Lord. Help us. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Many of us pretend to be what we are not. So God does not even know what to change you into. Because he's meeting a pretender. 
You are broke. You are forming like you are rich to God. <laughs> Is it not the one that said you are rich? You are now forming. Like, you, are, you are telling God that. <laughs> Lord, you know I'm rich, but I just want to explain to you that. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I close with that. Intimacy is built in prayer. Communication and prayer. Build it in prayer. Don't think anybody's marriage is better. Yours can be beautiful. Yes, Celebrate who you are. Celebrate what God has given you. As a woman, when you look in the mirror, stop wishing you are somebody else. You are who God has made you to be. Yes, sir. And you are beautiful enough. You are somebody's delicate delight. Stop apologizing for what you look like. Stop doubting your shape. It's beautiful. I know you will never have the opportunity to see your bum bum directly physically. <laughs> but trust me, it is fine. <laughs> you know that's how most women they do like this. They say snapping like this. Snapping. <laughs> what, is, what are you snapping? <laughs> that's the part they can't see. Are we blessed tonight? We'll continue the discussion later. I want us to pray that Lord, concerning marriage, I will not get it wrong. If you are married, say, Father, help me get it Make it a prayer. Make it a prayer we don't have all the time. Concerning marriage, I will not get it wrong. I will not